Hello and welcome to a quick compliance overview for students who are enrolling in a health science major or course. My name is Robin Harton and I'm the compliance coordinator here at Mount Wachusa Community College working with the nursing department and all of the health profession students as well. I really appreciate you taking the time to get this information. Having this information uh, really does benefit you as there are deadlines to submit out all of this documentation so that you're eligible to participate in the clinical component of your program. And getting this information as soon as possible really will help you be successful. So do you have a quick PowerPoint to share with you? And we will get started with this information. Okay, so again, quick compliance overview for anybody enrolling in a health science major course. I would just like to note that these requirements can change semester to semester or year to year. So it is best practice to check in with me directly if you have any questions and to make sure you have the most up-to-date information. So there's a couple different types of information that are needed to make sure you're in compliance. Um, immunization documentation, which will include a physical report, um, your immunization records, lab results, and annual vaccinations for any program that is multi-semester or multi-year. Other documentation includes a CORI check, CPR certification, health insurance, and drug screening. And we'll get into all of this a little bit more in depth now. So you will need a current physical to be on file with the college. We consider your physical to be current for two years. So you don't necessarily need to go out and make a new appointment with your doctor for a physical. If you've had one within the last two years, they can complete this form or submit documentation to verify that. Over here on the right hand side is a copy of our physical and immunization form specific to Mount Wachusett Community College. At the top is your information, then also space for your doctor to input the dates that you've had your vaccinations. Please note that if you are attaching um, tighter results, we do need that full lab report as well. The bottom portion of this form under report of health evaluation down here is the physical portion of the form. This is just indicating that you've had a full physical and you are now uh, eligible to participate in the technical standards um, associated with the clinical of your program. <clears throat> Please note that our form is asking, are there any abnormalities of the following system? So you do want this no column to be checked. Down here at the very bottom, there's a date, a space for the date of your most recent physical, and then also the date that your physician signed that form. So those due dates do not have to match. Sometimes they do, they do not have to. Again, your physical is valid for our purposes at the match for two years. The required immunizations include measles, mumps, and rubella, or MMR, which is a two-dose series, uh, varicella, or chickenpox, which is also a two-dose series, hepatitis B, which is either a two- or three-dose series, depending on the version you've received, um, and in addition to the vaccination series for hepatitis B, we also do require a titer to verify immunity. We also need documentation of your Tdap vaccination, meningitis, if you're under the age of 21, a flu shot, which needs to be updated annually per the flu season, which generally runs from October to May. Um, and then COVID-19 vaccination may be required per your clinical facility. Uh, this is not a requirement of Mount Wachusett Community College, but again, if you have a clinical component to your program, we have to adhere to the clinical site's requirements. So some required testing is tuberculosis or TB testing. This verifies that you do not have TB. This is something that needs to be updated annually and it'll be updated annually based on when your last TB test was completed. So if you're in a multi-year program, this is something you would have to update every year based on the last test that's on file. You can complete this in a couple of ways. You can do a two-step PPD. Um, a PPD is an injection into your forearm or a plant of the PPD, and you go back to the doctor two days later, 48 to 72 hours, um, and have that plant bred. That's step one. You would then have to go two weeks later and have step two planted, and then again, go back and have step two bred. You can also submit a quantifiram gold titer. This is a blood test. Again, verifying that you do not have TB. Both the PPD and the quantifiram gold titer should come back as negative. If either one does come back as positive, 
you would then be sent for a chest x-ray, which would verify you don't have active TB. For some of our international students who have received the BCG vaccination, it can cause a positive for either a PPD or a quantiferum gold. So the, the chest x-ray would just verify there's no active TB. We also require a hepatitis B surface antibody titer. This titer is testing for antibodies, which indicates that you are immune to hepatitis B. This is a requirement in addition to the vaccine series, but if you're not able to locate your vaccination series documentation, the series would be fine, uh, the titer would be fine alone as it's indicating immunity. Um, these requirements come all through Mass Department of Health um, for students that are in clinical with patient contact. So if you're not able to find your documentation, um, you can have titers run for not only hepatitis B, but also for MMR and varicella. Again, these titers are testing for antibodies and verify that you are immune. Um, I'd just like to note that if you're reviewing this presentation because you're interested in our transfer agreement with QCC for either the rad tech or respiratory therapy programs, QCC does require uh, MMR titers and varicella titers in addition to the hepatitis B titer, titer that we require here for health science students. One way to locate your vaccination information is just to print off an immunization list from possibly your patient portal or by contacting your physician's office and asking for one. Uh, you can also log on to the MIIS. This stands for Massachusetts Immunization Information System. It's a mass.gov website. You input your name and a little bit of information, and they will populate to you documentation of any vaccinations that you have had that have been reported to the state of Mass. Um, and then you can print that off as verification of your immunization status. Um, again, the MIIS is specific to Massachusetts residents, but New Hampshire also has a similar site that you can access. Additional compliance requirements include a CORI. Um, CORI checks are run on all students that participate in a clinical component for their program, and they are run every semester. The CORI form that we need completed will be provided to you. You'll complete it, sign it, and date it, and submit with a copy of either your driver's license or your passport, um, and these are required so that we can process that CORI. You also will need to be CPR certified. We are only able to accept the American Heart Association version of the BLS or basic life support for healthcare providers CPR certification. This certification comes with an online portion or a classroom component, as well as a hands-on skill session. We do need both components for you to be fully certified. Um, there are courses offered periodically through Mount Wachusett Community College, usually on about a monthly basis. So if you are looking for a way to get certified for CPR through the American Heart Association, please reach out to me and I can get you that information. We also do know of some other options in the community um, if the classes at Mount Wachusett are filled or if they don't work for you. We do also suggest that you do this pretty quickly as these courses are limited to about nine students um, and they do tend to fill up quickly. There's a lot of students that do need this certification. The certification is good for two years generally and it needs to be in good standing uh, for the entirety of your program if it is multi-year. <clears throat> We need verification that you have health insurance coverage. Um, so you can submit a copy of your health insurance card um, as long as it does indicate your name on it. If it does not have your name on it, you would need to contact your health insurance company and ask for a proof of coverage letter just to verify that you are covered under that policy. This would be something that would be needed if you're covered under a parent or a spouse for your insurance coverage. You can also purchase uh, health insurance through Mount Wachusett Community College. You'll be billed for this automatically if you are taking 12 credits or more. If you already have health insurance and you do not want to be billed for it, you wouldn't need to go on and waive that health insurance coverage. This is something you can do through student financial services. And if you are not taking 12 credits but would like to purchase it, you can also do that. But again, through student financial services if you need health insurance coverage. <clears throat> Students are also required to do a drug screening annually if you are in a multi-year program or prior to the start of your clinical. The drug screening that we complete is a 12-panel screening. Specific instructions will be sent to you closer to the time that your drug screening needs to be completed. Each program has their individual window of when the screening needs to be completed. Please adhere to that. Um, 
We use a third party company for the screening and all of that information is given to you when it's closer to that time. Just so you're aware, uh, nicotine will flag on the screening, but it will not preclude you from participation in your program or participation in clinicals. Um, and marijuana will also flag on your screening and this would preclude you from participation in clinical. This is due to our clinical sites receiving federal funding and marijuana not being legal on a federal level. So this is something coming out from our clinical partners. <clears throat> So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I am full-time here at the Mount, and you can reach me via phone, 978-630-9568, or via email, rhearton at mwcc.mass.edu. Um, any of the forms that you saw on this presentation or that were discussed can be given to you upon request. Please just reference this presentation and what program you are enrolling in when you reach out, and that'll just help me to make sure that you're getting the most up-to-date information for your program. And again, just want to note, it is great to reach out because these requirements can change, um, and if you reach out, then I can make sure that you're getting the most up-to-date information. Again, I just want to say thank you to to you all for watching and getting all of this information. It's putting you on a great, great step to success in your program. So we look forward to working with you soon.